been a beautiful takeoff. Everything apparently going sensationally well. Mark, five minutes. The first really dangerous point and, of this flight uh, has passed. Crew's advisor, trajectory and guidance are looking good, and Frank Borman came back with a very uh, chatty, thank you, Michael. He's talking to Michael Collins, who would be in the center seat today, except for an operation several months ago. Five minutes, 20 seconds into the flight. Go to the animation. If anything uh, went to miss now, the spacecraft... miles down range. Grand. Spacecraft uh, at this point could separate and come back in a normal uh, re-entry. It is building up toward orbital speed now. And at this point, uh, should be at around... Through another go on trajectory and guidance, which at this point are the most critical elements. It's six minutes, ten seconds into the flight. Our downrange distance now 400 miles. Our velocity in feet per second nearly 15,000 feet per second. We've achieved nearly 60% of the velocity required to make orbit. 57% uh, right now. Around 12,000 miles an hour. And our five miles above the Earth. The orbital speed required to orbit the Earth to balance between the centrifugal force going on out into space and uh, the gravity of Earth is 17,500 miles an hour. That's the speed that uh, they must uh, achieve to go into Earth orbit. Surgeon reports uh, he likes everything he sees. Seven minutes into the flight, so and we're uh, nearing the uh, second stage, nearing the point where we will drop off the second stage and light the third stage. This third stage engine lighting is a Daddy critical point. At about eight minutes and 40 hot seconds into the flight. It is the third stage that must boost the spacecraft out into the translunar trajectory. Our present velocity is 18,600 feet per second, and we are 100 miles above the Earth, 100 even. 625 yep. miles downrange. If there's any doubt uh, when this uh, third stage fires that it is working properly, uh, it could mean that the mission could not go on to the moon. That decision could be made at that point. Coming up on eight minutes, Mark, eight minutes. So they will be watching this third stage firing now in about 30 seconds from now, very, very carefully. The third stage is... 3,400 feet per second, 101.7 miles above the Earth, 734 miles downrange. And third stage engines of J2 develops 230,000 pounds of thrust burns about two and a half minutes to bring the vehicle to orbital speed and altitude. And this is the stage that has to reignite later for the translunar injection. Should be time for that staging right now. And the crew is advised they look good on the ground for staging. And Borman says, same here. We got S2 cutoff, we got S4B ignition. The Borman confirmed S4B ignition. So the third stage the has ignited. Good to us at nine minutes into the flight. That's the first step. Now if it develops its full power, uh, they will confirm that the S4B is ready to be shut we off. We uh, have 89% uh, of the velocity required. We're 920 miles down range. And uh, we're nine minutes, 20 seconds into the flight. This engine will be shut off in another uh, minute and a half approximately, and then to be restarted. Flight dynamics officer says our altitude is nominal, which is the typically conservative word for um, very nearly a perfect uh, mission, as nearly as we can observe at this point. Nine minutes, 50 seconds, and we've just gone to what we call mode four. If any trouble should develop now, we would uh, Go ahead and burn into orbit with our...
service propulsion engine. The crew is now being advised. We plan to cut off the third stage engine at 11 minutes, 28 seconds into the flight. We're now at 10 minutes, 10 seconds. We're yep. at 103.7 nautical miles above the Earth. Our velocity is at an even 24,000 feet per second, which is uh, just very, very close to orbital velocity. That's 95% of it. And we're 1,200 miles downrange. So it put us out a little bit east of Bermuda. If that uh, third stage uh, should not uh, function properly, and they did use a service propulsion system, that's a 20,500 pound thrust engine, uh, to go into orbit, it would mean that they would not refire for the lunar trip. It's a looking good back from uh, a looking good comment from Mike Collins. Eleven minutes twenty seconds. That uh, third stage cutoff should come any second now. Jim Lovell reporting a, a reading on one of his many gauges. We have Seco, says Frank Borman. Seco, and I would call it 11 minutes 30 seconds. That's the engine cutoff. That will be an estimate. 11 minutes 30 seconds. Our launch digital data shows uh, our velocity now 25,577 feet per second. The uh, data now has been re reduced, and we show an altitude of 102.5. And the crew has been given a go for orbit, and they responded enthusiastically that they, too, in fact, were go. So they've got a go for orbit. They're uh, half a mile off of their planned 103-mile uh, orbit. 102 and a half miles, not significant at all. They're a few miles uh, an hour slower than their planned 17,500 velocity for orbit, not significant at all. This flight of Apollo 8 in its first stages has gone exceedingly well, and it all goes well for the remainder of the flight. Just write us down what he saw on his, uh, his instrumentation. He shows an apogee of 102.6, a perigee of 96.8, and a cutoff velocity of 25,560 feet per second. Uh, that's within uh, oh, hundreds of a percentage point of what we were reading on our scales here in Houston. So now for the next testing out their spacecraft systems. The communications, their uh, computers, uh, their various thrusters on their uh, attitude control, and uh, if, they, if all of these things seem to be working well, and now they apparently have a good third stage there, they will decide in the next uh, uh, two hours whether or not to go for the moon. If so, they will fire those engines two hours and 55 minutes after the uh, takeoff, or in other words, at about uh, 9.45 Eastern time this morning. CBS News color coverage of the flight of Apollo 8 will continue in a moment.